should count important. She counts irrelevant. And because of the importance waging war with irrelevance, there's no peace. But you were looking at the transformational forgiveness and reunion in faithfulness. Now, when two people come together, husband and wife, a lot of things may happen. You're coming from different backgrounds. You don't have the same IQ. You don't have the same intelligence. And you don't have the same evaluation on everything that happens. You elevate circumcision. Moses, the woman knows nothing about circumcision. And circumcision is very important to an Israelite and to a Moses. But for uh, Zipporah, that was a bloody thing. Who gave you that? Who told you to do that? It was painful. It was bloody. I never heard of that in my father's house. Those two things could divide you. You count something important. You count it essential. You count it something you cannot do without. The other person says, what the use of this? I don't know the use of this. It doesn't have any importance to me. What you count important? She counts irrelevant. And because of importance, waging war with irrelevance, there's no peace. But now you forgive. She forgives you for what you count indispensable and important. And you forgive her for what she counts irrelevant, unimportant. And now that forgiveness must be transformational. It transforms you. It transforms me. And because the forgiveness is transformational, you have a reunion that you are faithful to each other. We're looking at Matthew chapter 18. We're looking at verse 21. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how ought shall my brother, my sister, my wife, my husband, my neighbor, our member, how, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And before allowing Christ to answer the question seven times, isn't that enough? Look at what we count as offense between husband and wife. Keeping the house, taking care of your clothes, preparing the food, taking care of the children, taking care of you the way your mother took care of your father. And then being the last to take anything in the house, the way your mother will prepare for the house and for the home to be nice for everybody but except herself. And you grew up with that and now you are married and what you are, every time the wife does something, you kind of uh, compare that with what mommy used to do and kneeling down whenever mommy Mommy was greeting daddy. And when daddy came back from work, you know, the attitude. And mommy would put everything aside, even when she was cooking, or, you know, in the kitchen. And then come to take the bag of daddy. You loved that. When I marry, I've been looking for a wife like that. How <laughs> you're married. And uh, your wife is not coming from that background. Your, your wife came from the background of daddy and mommy. You know, she goes to work and he goes to work. And then they come back. Whoever comes back first will begin to prepare food. Uh -uh. My daddy did not do My daddy never stepped into the kitchen. But you know her own daddy, she will carry that and carry that. And he will do this and that. And now you are married. You are from different backgrounds. And those backgrounds begin to conflict one with the other. And now you are uh, you're taking offense because of, uh, you know, those uh, offenses. You took offense and she went over the fence. You are separated. Because of those things. Now, it's reconciliation. You are born again, and she is born again, and you are now together. And you need to reorientate yourself, transform yourself, and don't look at what daddy and mommy used to do. Look at what Jesus Christ had given to his own people. And he said, not till seven times, but look at verse 22. Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times but until 70 times 7. That's difficult to calculate in the family because when our wives offend us, we don't say, okay, uh, excuse me. And then go to the register and put the date and put the number of the offense. And then another time, maybe the following day, uh, you're trying to say something and she didn't allow you to learn. She already starts talking. Let me finish before you answer me. Why? 
50 50. You talk, I talk, and if you keep on talking, I may forget what you have said that I need to, you know, put a question mark on. You're offended, then you rise up from there, go to your register. Number two, you can't do that. And so, how do you know 70 times 7? Just forgive. Let it transform you. That the things that used to bother you will not bother you anymore. The things you cannot change in your wife are height, are intonation, are understanding, are reasoning, are logic, are being illogical. All that will bring to the world with us. I happen to know mathematics, I, I do analyze a lot. My wife, like many of our people, you know, at school, Mathematics was not their issue, but she types. And my outlines, message outlines, I do that with my kind of writing, and she can decipher everything and does the typing. I cannot type, and she does not analyze like a mathematician. We're different, but we've come to learn and to know each other. The same thing you ought to do, that you learn and you know each other, whatever, at the beginning of your marriage, you were offended with now. You're a student in that marriage. You now forgive until 70 times 7. The grace of God multiply in every life in Jesus' name.